Have you heard this? Rats being tickled. A lot of cultures that have traumatic histories and often like laugh at things that people are shocked that you would laugh at. Would you like to hear a joke that Germans find very funny? Hit me with it. Hello to both of you. Uh, I'm Hannah Fry. I'm Emma Dabaru. I'm Adam Rutherford. And today we're going to have a chat about whether there's a formula to being funny. Well, you, you like to think it's like just off the cuff, but I think there there probably is like a sequence of expectations maybe that like constitute hum humour that could be kind of seen as a formula. And I think probably multiple formulas exist um, across across different cultures. Do you think that Irish people find different things funny to English people? Yeah, I noticed the difference hugely. So when I was like a teenager, like being a buzzer, which is basically like a funny person, and like somebody that was like good crack in like a social situation it was like such a kind of like aspiration of something to be. And um, I feel like humour is like very much like a cornerstone of, of Irish identity. And I think like specifically a type of humour that's expressed through a kind of like verbal dexterity, like just being quite quick witted and also being often like we have a big slagging culture. Oh, do you know what I was so you've got to, to have to like a really tough skin. I was just skin. about to say slagging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is that? It's basically where you're deliberately and extremely cruel to each other. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I recently brought my new partner over to Ireland to uh, meet my Irish family. And he was not prepared for <laughs> the <laughs> amount of slagging. Yeah. I mean, they went hard. Yeah, they went hard. Yeah. There is, though, of course, a, I think a difference between the different things that different cultures find funny. Mm -hmm. um, in advance of our conversation, I uh, had a little look online for a, a classically German joke. Would you like to hear a joke that Germans find very funny? Hit me with it. This is, um, this is according to Reddit which, as we all know, is factual. Um, OK, two men were on a bridge. One fell into the water. The other was called Helmet. <laughs> I think that's I, funny. I don't even get it. Wait a second. I, I, I think that's brilliant, but for possibly not the reasons that it was tended. I mean, it definitely subverts your expectations it about the, what the structure of a joke is. Sorry, I, like, I actually don't get it. I, I think it's it? the idea that, you know, I mean, it's a true statement that the other had a name. I mean, that's it. Is, that's the joke. I think so. Yeah, about <laughs> language and, and the structure of jokes, which is which, which which can be culturally specific. And in German, the past tense, you put the verb at the end of the sentence. So you ah. often don't know what the verb is going to be until you get to the end of the sentence. And that is a structure that allows jokes that can't happen in other languages. So it just doesn't translate, perhaps? Uh, possibly, unless you think... German jokes based on past tenses is, is funny. Let's talk about laughter then, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I think it's important for us to distinguish between humour and, and laughter. Well, there are different aspects to what laughter actually is and there are different situations in which laughter becomes appropriate. When the German helmet falling yes. in the water joke no, it wasn't, happens. No, it was the other guy. I, was, I, I completely I misunderstood right. the That's joke. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and, but there's also nervous laughter. There's laughter in situations which, in which laughter is inappropriate as mm. an expression. That some of the theories about the origin of laughter, Freud had one. He had this idea that um, laughter and comedy was release of pressure. In terms of the, the Freudian way, I need to read more about it, but I do think that a lot of what we find funny is about the build-up and release of tension. Well, there's the incongruity, so there's the idea that, that things that shouldn't be in the right pl in, the, in the place that you're expecting them to be, but that is the subversion of, of expectations. Yeah, or the, subver the subversion of societal norms as well, like saying things that are unexpected or like perhaps Inappropriate. But there's, there's an element of, of laughter and comedy which can be cruel as mm, well. Absolutely. And so we, we do know that, that there are elements to the, how the brain processes um, a situation which could be construed as amusing and results in laughter in different ways. So laughing when being tickled is something which other animals appear to experience. Rats make ultrasonic peeps. Do you know what? I've actually got a recording. Oh, good, because they're really this funny. Is, have you heard this? This is no, a rat, I didn't rats being it tickled. It's it absolutely really delightful. Can you hear this? It's tickling and... OK, so this is like nothing's happening here. Just the rat having a nice... And then it's being tickled. Yeah, they'll squeaky squeak. That's kind of how I expect them to laugh. Was it looking for more? We're looking for more? <laughs> and then coming back in for another little tickle? It's quite rough tickling, I would say. <laughs> So actually, the handlers, if you use the same person to do the tickling every day... Oh, it's if, a human tickling Oh, it's a human them. doing the tickling. Oh, oh those rats sorry. tickling each other. Oh, no, 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 no. This was... Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did they not do that? Oh, no, no, no. Not really, this no. This seems really, like, perverse. Here we go. But it, it's like they have... And the thing is, is that if you, if you repeat the same experiment, if you have the same handler coming in and tickling the rats every single day, it gets to the point where they start laughing just as the person comes in the room. 
I mean, that's so sweet. It, well, you're massively anthropomorphic. You don't know I, what they're, yeah. they're enjoying that or not at all. You can't no, ask No, he was looking around. for more. But here's <laughs> the thing, though. We, we, we are saying that animals are capable of vocalisations. Yes. And vocalisations during play. Yes. But you're drawing the line at saying whether that's laughter. Uh, yes. Because, you know, lots of vocalisations... Chimpanzees are incredibly vocal uh, uh, animals. And a lot of the noises that they make, we characterise as being positive and associated with laughter or humour or play. And I think probably they are. But I also think with my super boring sceptical, my God, how to kill a conversation about humour hat on, <laughs> we just don't know. But there are instances, are there not, of, uh, of apes, for, for instance, sort of playing tricks on each other. Looks like it. Yeah. yeah look, look, oh, so sceptical, isn't he? So sceptical. It definitely looks like it. There's, there's a couple of examples, and, and you, see them on, you see them on social media now because they are genuinely funny, of small, you know, baby, baby gorillas. It tends to be going up to the big silver back when it's facing away and poking them in the bum. And it almost always is poking them in the bum and then running away. And it looks like classic teasing behaviour as a child would do to their, to their parent or friend. It looks a lot like it, but I, I remain super killjoy scientists here to ruin parties by saying we don't know what they're doing. Isn't it OK to like just like not completely know, though, and just be like, this is what it looks like is happening. We can infer this is probably what's happening. We don't have to know definitively, do we? True, but you're on a pathway to saying nice things about dolphins who have nice smiley faces, but are just the cruelest, worst, <laughs> most evil animals that have ever existed. OK, all right. Let me let me let me break this down then they're definitely making vocalizations you don't necessarily think it's laughter but the example that you gave i think you could even possibly argue that that's humor right that's not just laughter that's like enacting something so that the thing that happens next will delight you yeah kind of, maybe although it might just be annoying i i think only humans hu us are capable of of humor because i think it does fit into certain subversions of structures the, of the expectation of something happening and then it not happening, the incongruity of it. Predicting something and then it, it either proving to be correct or not. Right. What Can we apply that to a baby gorilla poking the, its dad in the bum? But they are making a prediction, aren't they? It is sort of playing with the world. Yeah, and I, the definition of humour isn't this... While I think the subversion of expectation is often the type of humour that I like, I don't think that's, like, the definitive characteristic of humour... There's some humour that doesn't subvert expectation. It's just like more physical or more slapstick or something like that. So I think maybe that's what the yeah, yeah. monkeys yeah, yeah. are involved in. I think one of the biggest arguments against there being just this straightforward formula to being funny is that AI isn't yet as good as humans at being funny. And AI is normally very, very good at formulaic things. Um, but you still can use AI to execute your own humour uh, better than you could before. For example, there is a feature on Samsung's Galaxy AI uh, that allows you to do something called sketch to image and add on things to photos. Let me, let me show you how it works. So I can take a photo of you. Got this photo of you. Beautiful. That was... When you're looking like a Victorian man. And then let's say I wanted to um, just add on a crown. Here we go. If I do sketch the image, look, it's just giving you a little... Oh, that's very clever. Isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, I am. Oh, that's so look, this is the crown that I drew, which I'll be honest. I can't tell the difference. I mean... <laughs> what? Show me that again. Yeah. I mean, it's not hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. But there is some evidence that shows that when you have people who are in conversation with one another, that actually a lot of laugh laughter isn't connected with humour, that laughing happens when people are saying things that aren't even that funny. Right? I do that with you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I also was thinking um, in terms of a, a difference, I think humour can be about um, trying to, like... Uh, transmute trauma as well so I think like a lot of cultures that have quite um like maybe like traumatic histories often have like quite dark humor and often like laugh at things that people from other cultures are shocked that you would laugh at well like, as an act of social cohesion yeah and I guess maybe trying trying to deal with like a collective pain traditionally like you know you wouldn't really be able to often you couldn't say something at face value but if you say it in a way where you're like taking the piss then that's a way of, like, expressing it. Humour, what we find funny, is so personal. It's not just culturally specific, but it's, mm. it's personal. You know, you know I've got a very childish sense of humour. But I also, 
you know, love Stuart Lee because I'm basically because I'm the archetype of a Guardian reader. You know, those are two very different things. And that that again is it, it there's no accounting for taste. And actually, I think that is the ultimate point, really, that that. Well, when we're talking about humour, it is personal, it is, is cultural, it's about shared experiences, and that, I think, is what makes it ultimately human, which is why, for the time being, there isn't a formula. Mm -hmm.